Good morning, and welcome to Carlsbad Baptist Church. There's just a couple of things I need to bring to your attention before we begin today's service. If you could get your bulletins out, you should see inside the bulletin an insert. Um, we have a lot of things going on for December, and they're all listed there. Um, we will go through those as um, not today, but if you can just look at them to see what's coming up, we have a good bit of stuff going on. Um, I'm excited to start the holiday season with you guys. And Christmas and Thanksgiving is always a great time of the year to be with family, to be with our church family. But there's some people who cannot be with us um, during these times and just because of ability or whatever. So we have a list of all of our people who are in shut-ins or whatever in nursing homes right outside these doors, either in the hall here or in the back. Um, there's a list of them. If you could take the opportunity to grab that list and maybe write them a card, um, that would be just absolutely wonderful to do a Christmas card um, for all of these people. Also, poinsettias are going to be filling up the church pretty soon. If you would like to um, have a poinsettia, the cost is $20 to do that. It's always beautiful to come in here during the Christmas time and see all the poinsettias. Um, so if you could do that, that'll be awesome. And last but not least, I'd just like to say a personal thanks to all of the people who contributed to the shoe boxes again this year. We had, um, as a church, we, cl we collected 80 boxes, so thank you so much. But also, there was a huge financial c contribution this year from all of you, so thank you for that as well. Um, it's, it's so great to be a part of a church who really just gives back, especially to the Operation Christmas Child. So on behalf of the church, on behalf of the staff, and me individually, thank you so much for participating in that. Um, that is all we have for today. If you would, join me in prayer as we start today's service. God, thank you, Lord, for this church. God, thank you so much for the members who are here that just constantly are always giving back to, uh, to your kingdom growth, uh, to, the, to the, all of the events. We have plenty of people who just serve and just give back. And we, I just wanted to say thank you for them. God, I thank you, Lord, for to the season that is upon us of Thanksgiving. And even in the hard times when things doesn't seem to be going right, help us to fixate on the, what we do have. Help us to fixate on the things that you have blessed us with instead of what we don't have. God, may you give us a heart of contentment. May you give us a heart of gratitude as we go forth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Welcome again this morning. Let's all stand and sing, God is so good.
may be seated. Good morning. This is Olivia. Say hey. This is my baby niece. And this is one of the things that I'm most thankful for for this year. She was born in February. That doesn't mean I don't love you. <laughs> she was born this year, and I'm so thankful for her. So Thanksgiving's coming up, and we're, I wanted to talk to you about being thankful. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it tells us, um, be thankful in all circumstances. So that means that no matter what happens, we should be thankful. So let's kind of talk about some scenarios. Let's say we're on a team together, maybe a soccer team or a basketball team, and we win the game. What can we be thankful for if we win the game? Winning the game, game, right? What happens if we lose? What can we be thankful for? being able to play. Maybe we had fun while we were playing, right? We could be thankful for that. All right, let's say your mom or your dad or your grandma take you, takes you to Walmart and you're getting groceries, maybe for your Thanksgiving feast and you're all excited, but you see this toy that you really, really want. And thankfully your mom or your grandma, your dad, whoever, they buy it for you. What can you be thankful for in that situation? That you got what you wanted, right? But what happens if they say, you know what? Christmas is right around the corner and you really don't need to get that right now. What can you be thankful for then? They cared about you, right? What else? You're at the store and you're getting what? What were they buying? Food, right? You can be thankful that you got food maybe for a Thanksgiving feast or that you were getting food for your lunchbox, whatever that may be. What happens if it's really beautiful outside? It's a beautiful day, it's a little cool, but the sun's nice. What can we be thankful for for that? It's pretty, maybe what can you do on a pretty day? Play outside, you can enjoy time outside with family, right? What can we be, what if it's not pretty outside? What if it's raining? Playing inside, maybe you have toys inside, I didn't even think of that. You can be thankful of what you have inside to be able to do TV or computer or even having toys to play with, yes. Anything else? What does the rain do for us? It helps our plants grow, right? It helps everything outside. We need the rain. Um, it also, like farmers, it helps crops grow, which is really important for us to be able to have what we need. All of those things are very important. And that, I think Paul writes this um, in Thessalonians and tells us to be thankful in all situations or all circumstances, because when we do that, we recognize that God is good and God gives us good things. Even in the moment, we could be a little sad that we lost a game or sad that you're not getting the toy that you want, but we can always be thankful that God gives us good things, right? Am I boring you? (laughs) So we can always be thankful. I wanted to point out too, two verses ahead of this. It's very short. Verse 16 says, always be joyful. And verse 17 says, never stop praying. And I think those things give us the strength and give us the perspective or the focus that we need to have in order to always be thankful for the things that we have, okay? Let's pray. God, we thank you um, for the Thanksgiving season. We thank you for the good gifts that you give us um, to allow us um, just to see your goodness in all that we do. But God, we pray today that in the bad situations or the things that we have in our lives that we may not necessarily like, that God, we focus on um, the good things that you give us. God, help us to realize how you take care of us. God, in the the things that you do, um, even in the bad circumstances, Father, how you are good. God, I thank you for these beautiful young ladies in front of me and in my hands. God, I just pray that you continue to bless them, bless their families, and let them have a good Thanksgiving. God, we love you and we praise you. It's your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's all stand and we're going to sing, Count Your Many Blessings.
How many of you have thought about all your blessings that this time of the, the year and Thanksgiving, that's mainly when you really start thinking about how you're so blessed and everything. So we're going to sing about it this morning. May we pray. Father, what a great day you have provided for us. This is your day, a day that you set aside that we can praise your most holy name, that we can worship you, and we can count our blessings that you have given us. Father, throughout this time in our country, there is a lot of discouraging news, a lot of things that maybe we don't like, but help us to know that you are in control, that your work will be done throughout this whole world, and that we're not a resident of here, of this world that we are in now, but our residence, permanent residence, if we're in the Lamb's Book of Life, will be with you in heaven or wherever you are. Help us to always count our blessings and to praise you. And Father, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit. We would just pray that your words today might be an encouragement, that it might be a light into their lives. Be with us in the rest of the service. We ask in Christ's name, amen. Remain standing, please.
Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing And you're desperate for some healing Let me tell you about my Jesus He makes a way Before we begin our message today, I'd like to take a couple people to the Lord in prayer. If you would, remember Wayne Beasley in your prayers. Uh, Brittany and Billy are with us this morning. Uh, Wayne is in the ICU at McLeod's Hospital in very critical condition. So if you would, pray for him and pray that what the doctors are doing, God will use to bring a healing in his life and that God himself will touch him with his healing hand. Also, if you'll remember Deborah Edwards in your prayers, she's going to have a surgery tomorrow, a hip replacement. So if you'll remember that. If you would, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you today for the power of your love in our lives. I thank you for your healing hand that touches us in times of need. I thank you, Lord, for being with those in the weeks ahead of this that have already had surgeries, Lord, and they're healing now. I pray, Lord, that everything will continue to go well for them. Lord, I lift up Deborah Edwards to you that everything will go well for her tomorrow. And I pray, Lord, uh, for, for Wayne. Lord, I just trust Wayne to you and ask, Lord, that you will guide the doctors in all that they're doing for him right now. 
And Lord, I pray that you'll work through those things to bring healing to his body. Father, continue to we would be with Brittany and Billy and the family and lift them up, Lord, and take care of them through this time. And we just trust all these needs to you now. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And tomorrow, I mean, this week is someone's 90th birthday, and it slipped my mind. Who is it, Melanie? Norma Beck. That's right. So is Norma here? No. So if you remember Miss Norma in your prayer, she's going to be 90 this week also. 91. Okay, 91. Ooh, we getting old. No. <laughs> she's doing good. Okay. Um, you know, for the last several weeks, I have been preaching to you through the Baptist Faith and Message, and today we're finishing those, uh, that series of messages. We're looking at the last two articles in the Baptist Faith and Message, and it just happened to fit in, I think, so appropriately for the week of Thanksgiving, because what these two articles talk about are so much what I'm thankful for about being a, a citizen here in the United States of America. And the first one is uh, Article 17, which is religious liberty. Let me read it to you, and then we'll have a prayer. It says, church and state should be separate. The state owes to every church protection and full freedom in the pursuit of its spiritual ends. In providing for such freedom, no ecclesiastical group or denomination should be favored by the state more than others. The state has no right to impose penalties for, relig for religious opinions of any kind. The state has no right to impose taxes for the support of any form of religion. A free church in a free state is the Christian ideal, and this implies the right of free and unhindered access to God on the part of all men and the right to form and propagate opinions in the sphere of religion without interference by the civil power. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we just come to you today with grateful hearts. Grateful, Lord, for how you have blessed these United States of America. And Lord, how you have uh, put your loving hand on us, Lord, and helped us to stand strong on truth over the years. Father, I know our nation has weakened that stance in recent years, but Father, I still feel that the majority of the people in America want the truth. Father, the truth is that we believe that everyone has a right to worship you. And this has always been a basis of our freedom here in the United States, Lord. And I thank you that we still have that freedom today in America. And I pray, Lord, that that freedom will never be taken away from us. So, Lord, guide us today as we look at uh, the Baptist faith and message and how it applies to the truth in your word, the scripture, and help us to see how we should conduct ourselves in these United States as Christians. For it's in your name that we pray, amen. In Philippians 3.20, it says, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. You know, that's the interesting thing about being a Christian. We have dual citizenship. Some of you out here might have dual citizenship in different countries uh, because some of you were raised military and you were born in other countries, and you might have a citizenship in the country where you were born as well as being a citizen here in the United States. As Christians, when a person accepts Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you become a citizen of the kingdom of God for eternity, and that citizenship can never be taken away from you. But as being uh, uh, born and raised here in the United States of America, uh, we are citizens here, right here in the United States. So how do these two affect each other? Do they ever come into conflict with each other? The honest truth is they should not. Our citizenship in heaven should not conflict with our citizenship in the United States because I believe our nation was built on Christian principles. So there should not be a conflict but in recent years, we have seen conflicts. We have seen a conflict in the basic truth sometimes as they are being interpreted and applied in our nation. But as Christians, as good citizens, not only of the kingdom of heaven, but also the kingdom of, uh, the, I mean, the, the citizen of the United States of America, we should be the best citizen we could be 
right here in the United States of America also, because our actions reflect Jesus Christ to others around us. So let's support our nation, let's love our nation, and let's be Christians shining and reflecting God's truth to the nation that we live in. That's what all of this is talking about, that we should have a right as Christians in the United States to worship our God freely. And up to this point, we do. But that could be taken away from us. And let's pray that it never is. Let's pray that our nation will never, ever allow the freedom of religion to be taken away from us. During, uh, and let me read one more verse to you, Matthew twenty two twenty one. it says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. So we can be dual citizens and we can uh, support our nation through our taxes and through our actions and we still support the kingdom of God through our tithes and offerings and through our service to him every day in our lives by being faithful to him. Uh, during this COVID time, there has been um, periods where it seems like the government was overstepping their boundaries when it comes to churches. They were trying to tell us when we could assemble and when we could not assemble. Uh, they were, there even uh, was a time that they were offering money to help churches. I want you to know that we as Crosswell Baptist Church did not apply for any funds from our federal government. We got no money through COVID relief because we believed that our church family through the blessings of the Lord would continue to support this church and see this church through the COVID. And honestly, we had a fantastic year last year financially. We met the budget, went over the budget with the giving of the church. And I believe that's because we trusted God to bless us. Now, some churches took some of those funds from the federal government, but uh, we did not because I believe in separation of church and state, and that's what this talks about too. So we have to understand that w first, we believe that the church must be free to fulfill its gospel ministry as assigned by Christ without interference or assistance from the government. So that's why we didn't take the funds because we didn't want to feel obligated to the government down the road, okay? Uh, we trusted God to see us through and take care of us because we want to always have the right to preach the gospel truth in the United States of America. That's getting more difficult in the culture we live in today. There are those who are being attacked for standing up as a Christian in our culture. But as far as our government stands right now as of this day, we have the right to stand on our Christian principles. And that's what we should be doing in our America. The second thing though concerning our nation and our freedom of religion is that we believe that Christian citizens must obey the government and its laws as long as the government does not conflict with the laws of God. We should be uh, good citizens in this country because we're setting the example of Christ before others. But let me tell you, when there is a direct conflict, a direct conflict between the laws of the land and the laws of God, we are to obey the laws of God. So there are some laws that have been passed in America in recent years that conflict with the law of God. We're not going to practice those laws of America. We're not going to be a part of that. And one day, the government's probably going to come down on us because of it, but it'll just have to do that. One thing recently had happened in our country. Uh, well, two things, really. One happened a long time ago and the other recently. Uh, several decades ago, our country said that abortion was okay and that it was accepted here in the United States and that it was a legal practice. We as Southern Baptists have stood against abortion from the day that that law was passed. And I pray that we will always stand against abortion because these are children of God that are being killed uh, through abortion. And we need to continue to fight and stand for those innocent lives that are being killed. So we stand against that law in America. 
<laughs> Even more recently, they have passed a law where same-sex people can get married. A man can marry a man and a woman can marry a woman. We do not believe that as Southern Baptists, and I pray we will never accept that as Southern Baptists because God's Word is so clear on that. And I'll talk about that a little later in the message also because it applies to the next part of it. But these are just a couple of examples where we have to understand that, yes, we're citizens of America, but we're, first of all, citizens of heaven. We're citizens of God's kingdom, and that is what takes priority in our lives. So I thank God for our religious freedom, but when religious freedom in America is challenged, we stand on God's truth. Now, Article 18 is about the family, and this applies to what I was talking about earlier. Uh, I'm going to stop and discuss each slide as we go along, so just be patient on each slide as you go through them back there. Article 18 on the family, it says, God has ordained the family as the foundational institution of human society. The foundational institution. God planned from the beginning for there, there would be family. First of all, we are family with God. We are his children. We are made in his image. Then he created woman for man to have the family. It goes on to read in our Baptist faith and message, it is composed of persons related to one another by marriage, blood, or adoption. Marriage is the uniting of one man and one woman in covenant commitment for a lifetime. It is God's unique gift to reveal the union between Christ and his church. That's what's reflected in a marriage, God's relationship of us through the church and Christ. It says, and to provide for the man and the woman in marriage, the framework for intimate companionship, the channel of sexual expression according to biblical standards, and the means for pro procreation of the human race. Now, let me stop and talk to you there a minute about what we just read. First of all, it says the uniting of one man for one woman. We know that God created Eve for Adam, and we're going to always stand strong on that truth as Southern Baptists. We're not going to give in to the lies that Satan has convinced the lawmakers of America to pass. We're not going to give in to that, even though it is the government of the United States of America that has passed those laws. They're still not right when it comes to God's truth. And we cannot accept it just because it came from our government. We have to stand on God's truth, that marriage is for a man and for a woman. That's how God created us. And it says he created that for that reason, for sexual expression. Anything concerning sex outside of marriage is wrong, totally wrong, anything and everything. And that is so opposite of our culture today. Our culture today is that anything and everything is accepted, but no, not according to God's word. And we live on the principle of God's word. And I want to tell you, and I've told you this before, God didn't do that to make life boring for us. He did these things to make life better for us, to bring more fulfillment, more joy, more happiness, more peace in life than what we could have if we lived by the standards of this world. Because God knows human nature. He created us. And he knew if we did things outside of marriage that it would come back to hurt us. And we have seen in life where it hurts people. So God wants the best for us, and that's why he wants us living by these principles, okay? Now, it goes on in our Baptist faith and message to say, the husband and wife are of equal worth before God since both are created in God's image. The marriage relationship models the way God relates to his people, a husband is to love his wife as Christ loved the church. A wife is to submit to her husband, uh, to, cry, uh, to her, her a, a wife is to submit herself graciously, graciously to the servant leadership of her husband, even as the church willingly submits to the headship of Christ. Now, let me jump ahead to a scripture verse I want to give you concerning this. It's found in Genesis 2, 21 through 23. 
So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken from man." Let's go back and look at this according to that verse in our Baptist faith and message. God created husband and wife equal in his sight. We're equal before God. But in God's plan of structure for all of creation, he has a definite hierarchy of structure. And one of those is that he created man first, then he created woman from man. And man is to be the head of the household, lead, leading the household spiritually as we march forward in God's plan in life. And the woman is to, sub, to submit to the man graciously. And if you're living with a godly man wife, I assure you, you know what it means to s submit graciously because you're more than willing, if you're living with that godly man, to submit to his leadership in the home. And that's God's perfect plan for the home. But here's what's happened in our society here in America. The devil is doing his best to destroy the family. You see, God created family, and he had a, a, a very specific plan for family. But, God, but the devil says, how can I keep people away from God? Well, one way I can keep people away from God is by destroying family. So he's done everything he can to destroy family here in America. It goes on to say, children from the moment of conception are a blessing and a heritage from the Lord. Parents, would you agree with that? Oh, come on, give me an amen. <laughs> parents are to demonstrate to their children God's pattern for marriage. Okay, parents, you're to set the example of what a marriage is supposed to be. Parents are to teach their children spiritual and moral values and to lead them through consistent lifestyle example and loving discipline, to make choices based on biblical truth. Children are to honor and obey their parents. We, and this, this is so important. Uh, the Ten Commandments tell us that we are to honor our parents. But again, in society today, there have been parents actually arrested because of children calling the authorities on them because of some kind of punishment they have uh, given them in the home. And the, the authorities come in and they bring charges against the parent for being an unfit parent. Children, I got news for you. Your parents are in control of you. Until you leave that home, they are in control of you. They're the ones that God has placed in authority over you. They have the power in their life to help you to grow and to become who you should be in your life. And you need to respect and love those parents with all of your heart. And yes, sometimes there's going to be punishment. But if they're living righteous lives, that punishment is in line with God's purpose for your life. So you need to respect that, and you need to honor and obey your parents. That's what God tells us to do in his word. The, the things are so mixed up in our society today when it comes to the home. The devil is having a field day destroying family, destroying the home, and people are so confused on who's in charge of who until today we believe that nobody's in charge of anybody, and everybody's supposed to have their own way, and nobody can say anything about it. You have to just accept it and go with it. And that is so wrong and so against God's principles because God has given us an exact plan and we are to live by his plan and follow his will and his purpose in the Lord. You know, there are other things I want to say this morning, but this is the week of Thanksgiving and I don't want to offend people sitting in our congregation today. So I'm not going to say those things, but there are some people even today that do not follow the principles of God's word when when it comes to family. And we need to understand to receive God's full blessings in our lives, we have to do it God's way. 
God's way, not the world's way. We cannot live family according to this world. We have to do family according to God if we're going to receive God's blessings in the family. Young people, hear me on that. Start your home out right. Put God at the center of your marriage. When I do marriage counseling with a couple uh, before marriage, I always let them know that there are three people in that marriage. There's the husband, the wife, and God. And God is the center of that marriage. And if when you take God out of that marriage, that marriage more than likely is going to fail because the devil wants to destroy your marriage. But greater is he that is in you than is he that is in the world. So if you have God in your marriage, God's going to take care of your marriage and the devil's not going to be able to destroy your marriage. So that is the hope that we have when it comes to family. Christians, we bear the responsibility to tell the truth, to live the truth, and to bear witness to God's loving intention in establishing marriage and family for our good. The world's looking at us, and they're watching us. And when they see the church not doing what, believe it or not, a lot of them know what the Bible says. And when they see the church not doing what the Bible tells us we're supposed to do, they said, well, what purpose is the church? Why do I need Jesus? They're not living any different than I am. So we are hurting ourselves and our witness when we're not doing it God's way. Christians, we have a responsibility to live life according to God's plan and not the way of the world. We have got to follow God's purpose for our lives. We believe children are a gift from God and we cherish them. In Psalm 127, it says, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. We need to continue as Christians to set the home as the example to the world. A Christian home. I believe one of the most beautiful things in existence on this earth today is a Christian home. A home where the man is a husband as he should be to his wife and he's father as he should be to his children and he's a servant of the Lord as he should be. And then the wife loves her husband with all of her heart and she honors him and she obeys him as the leader in the home and graciously follows his will. And she prepares and takes care of the home as God instructs her to take care of the home. And the husband and the wife together instruct their children and help their children grow up to come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. And they guide their children in God's truths in their lives. And you see children that obey God because they see their parents obeying God. And what a beautiful thing that is on this earth today because it is so rare. Why is a diamond so beautiful? Because it is so rare. If there were as many diamonds as there are grains of sand on the beach, we wouldn't give a rip about diamonds. We'd just walk right on by them like we do the grains of sand. But that's where it is with a fa Christian family today in America. It is as rare as a diamond, and it is a beautiful thing to behold when you find a Christian home. It, God is pleased when he has a Christian home to set the example of Christ before the world we're living in today. So I challenge you to live that life, to have that Christian home for the world that we live in now. I would pray that we would continue to fight for truth. I'm going to ask you this morning, as we go into this week of Thanksgiving, think about your life and what you're truly grateful for. Are you really grateful to have the opportunity to live in a nation that allows us to worship God freely? And are you going to stand up and continue to stand on his truths in this nation? God has blessed us with a great country. Do you appreciate the freedoms you have right here in America to live your Christian life here in our land? 
And are you even more grateful for the freedom that God allows us to experience from the consequences of our sins? Once we accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, our sins are forgiven and forgotten by God, and we do not have to account to them to God anymore because he has forgotten them. So we should be so grateful to a God who, through Jesus Christ, does not see us imperfect anymore. When you accept Christ as Savior and Lord, he doesn't see you as flawed anymore. You're not guilty in his eyes. He sees you through Jesus Christ, and he sees you perfect. He sees you pure. He sees you as his child that he created in his image, and he is so thrilled and happy with you. That is what's so exciting about living in Christ and living in his will and in his purpose because we are a pleasure to God even as our children are a pleasure to us. So I would pray that this Thanksgiving that you would be so grateful for freedom. Freedom we have in the United States and America and pray that those freedoms will never, ever be taken away from us and that you are thankful for the freedom that you have through Jesus Christ that God has granted to you by having Christ die for your sins. If you have not experienced that freedom, today would be the day to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You know, during the invitation this morning, I'll be here for anything you want to pray about, but maybe you just want to come forward and pray. Maybe you want to stand at the altar or kneel at the altar on this Thanksgiving Sunday and just Tell God what you are truly grateful and truly thankful for. And pray to him that you can be that man, that you can be that woman, that you can be that husband, that wife, that you will be that child that God intends for you to be. That you will be the citizen in this United States of America that God needs you to be. This, let's let make this a true day of thanksgiving as we enter our invitation. Would you join me as we pray? Father, I just thank you today for the privilege and the opportunity to live in the United States of America. Lord, you could have chosen for me to be born anywhere in this world, but Father, you allowed me to be born right here in America. Lord, I thank you for the freedoms that this country was founded upon. I thank you, Lord, for the freedoms we still experience today. And Lord, I pray that these freedoms will never be taken away from us in our land. Father, I pray for Christians that we will stand strong on your truth, not back down and give in to the things that are happening in our our country now, that we will not accept lies as the truth, that we will not follow wicked ways, that we will not accept what the devil is doing Instead, we will continue to see what it is as wrong, that we'll continue to fight against wrong, and that we'll continue to stand and show your truth to those around us. Father, I pray for every home today that you will bless every home. Bless every man here today, Lord, that they will walk in a strong relationship with you and that they will set that Christian example in their home. Bless every wife, every woman that is here today. May they be pure in your sight and may they let your radiance glow from their lives to those around them. Father, I pray for every child here today. May they understand how much they are loved and how they are a gift of God to the parents that you gave them to. And Father, may they honor and obey and love their parents. Father, again, we thank you for these United States of America. And Father, we apologize and we are sorry, Lord, for where we have failed you as a nation. But Lord, we pray that the freedoms that we still have will continue to stand strong so that we can continue to show the lost people Jesus Christ and that they could have the opportunity to come to know Jesus even here in these United States of America. For it's in your name that we pray, amen. Let's all stand, sing Jesus. We just want to thank you. Jesus, we just want to thank you. Jesus, we just want Just want to thank 
y'all so much for coming today. And I thank God for you on this Thanksgiving week. You are a blessing to Cindy and me in our lives. Uh, We're leaving this afternoon, making our journey to Alabama. Uh, We have not been home for two years this Thanksgiving. So we're going home to celebrate Thanksgiving with my sisters and their families. So we'll be gone through Friday. We'll be back really late Friday night. Uh, But if you need anything, call Nathan. Nathan will take care of it. Uh, But thank you, and I pray that you'll all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for the model that you set way back when in Genesis of family. God, I thank you, Lord, for each and every family that's here, each and every family that's represented. God, it's just, it's just a blessing to be a part of a strong, biblical, godly family. And we just say thank you, Lord, for setting that model up. God, I pray, Lord, now as we, en- we go to enjoy the week of Thanksgiving and be with family, that we, you just bless our time together. You bless every discussion with that, that we have. Bless our, just our time of togetherness. And may we continue to grow that strong bond. And God, may you take care of our pastor and his wife as they head down to go see their family. And may it be just a great time of fellowship for them as well. May you get them there and back safely. We ask all these things in your name. Amen.